I bring this meeting to order for the uh, full 30 meeting of September 15th. Uh, board member staff, members of the public are reminded that a full authority committee meeting is being recorded and will be posted on authorities' website along with the official written minutes. As such, comments and opinions expressed may be published, and any comments expressed by individual board members, guests, and the general public are their own and do not represent the opinions and comments of the full authority and or the Kettle Creek uh, board of directors. The recorded video of the authority meeting is not considered the official record of that meeting. The official record of the full authority shall be uh, consists solely of the minutes approved by the full authority. Uh, do you want to do a roll call first, Elizabeth? Sure, Dennis Kravitz. Here. Dom Dominique Chaguer sends her regrets. Stephen Harvey sends regrets. Jim Herbert. Present. Grant Jones. Here. Bill Mackey. Here. Steve Peters. Here. Elizabeth Peloza. Here. Allison Borwick. Here. Ralph Winfield. Here. Mr. Chair, we have eight of 10 members present. Thank you, Elizabeth. Are there any declarations of pecuniary interest? Seeing none, uh, we have the uh, minutes of the August uh, 11th uh, full authority meeting. Any errors or omissions? Peters will move. I'll second. Second, Ralph. Any further discussion? Call the vote, please, Elizabeth. Evans? Yes. Herbert? Yes. Mackey? Yes. Peters? Yes. Peloza? Yes. Warwick? Yes. Winfield? Yes. Jones? Yes. The motion passes. Thank you. We'll go to the matters arising. First is our media report uh, from Betsy. Welcome, Betsy. Go ahead. Thanks, Mr. Chair. Uh, just some samples of social media posts from the last month. Uh, so you'll see some source protection messaging as well as um, some before and after shots of Frag Mighty's um, management that was done in Middlesex Center. Uh, next slide, Jess. Uh, as well, Jen picked up the snapping turtles uh, from Upper Thames that had come from nests that were found in unsuitable locations at Dalewood. So 66 turtles were released back into the Dalewood Reservoir. Uh, giving them a better chance at survival. Just uh, before you go, Bessie, just uh, just wondering about survival rates. Do, do you have any indication of how many of those uh, snapping turtles will survive to adult? I would probably uh, direct that to Jen if she'd have a better indication of how many will live. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, the, what I've been able to gleam is that it's, if you have about 100 turtle eggs, maybe 1% of those will make it to adulthood. Really? So because all of our species of turtle are uh, species at risk now. It's any turtle that we can help along its way is definitely a benefit. Thanks. Question? Go ahead. Thank you. It, is the reason they don't survive is because of the, the cold winter or because of not the correct food for them? Um, uh, to Jim, uh, it's usually a factor of a couple of um, reasons. One is uh, habitat loss. Um, habitat disturbance, um, road mortality is a big factor in turtle survival, especially with snapping turtles. They're such a long lived species that it takes them between 15 to 20 years before they become sexually mature and produce eggs. So if one turtle dies alongside the road, that can set back the population quite significantly. Mm. So Thank you. There, there is a lot of factors. That's interesting. Anything further for Betsy? Thanks, Betsy. Move down to item B, project tracking from Elizabeth. Mr. Chair, it's been a busy month. Uh, we were able to introduce online day use booking uh, system was launched at Dalewood and Lake Whitaker. So this will be a significant help uh, as we enter the, the slower months um, 
at the campgrounds where we don't have gate staff um, all, all week. Uh, people can now purchase their day uses online, uh, which is a, a big improvement. Uh, Jen's been busy with her benthic invertebrate sampling. Uh, there was two Frank Mighty's control projects conducted on CA lands as part of the Great Lakes Local Action Funding. Uh, we organized a tour for our Ontario power generation to highlight some of our tree planting sites and received um, some funding to support a volunteer plant of potted shrubs around uh, Lake Margaret that will be coming up in September. And uh, we've started opening up a new portion of the Dan Patterson Wetland Trail with assistance from our staff and the Environmental Youth Corps. Questions for Elizabeth? Yes, I, I have a question. Go ahead. Uh, it, it might, to you, Mr. Cherry, it might be answered by um, Betsy, but anyway, a, a year or two ago, they put all those plants out by Lake Margaret on that, on that uh, north side. I wonder how have they survived? Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, to uh, Jim. Um, we haven't done a survival assessment this year. I know um, when they were planted, they did experience some defoliation. Um, so we'll definitely be monitoring the area um, over the years to see if replants are required. The area that will be planted this year though, however, um, was chosen by City of St. Thomas staff and it will be done on the south shore of Lake Margaret. Thank you. Anything further? That we'll move down to watershed conditions with Jennifer, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, just kind of a, a summary of uh, what's been happening over the last uh, month or so. Uh, water levels have been, uh, were lower than normal within the watershed um, and fluctuating with rain events. Lake Erie um, has remained high, um, but lower than those uh, really high levels that we've seen and that we saw in 2019 and 2020. Um, we did issue a flood outlook on September 7th when the weather conditions were conducive for a potential um, high water event. Um, we've also been busy collecting uh, survey data down in Port Stanley for the flood mapping project and um, did another uh, season of uh, fish sampling for the um, municipal drain project. And you can see a couple of, of our local fish species on the screen. Golden red horse is a sensitive species and um, a sport fish, smallmouth bass. Thanks, Jennifer. Any questions for Jennifer? I guess, Jennifer, a uh, few days ago, we had the lake turnover again and disturbed the water. And of course, the water supplies were affected by it. Um, anything from your side that you noticed? Um, we have gotten a, a couple of calls, um, or sorry, emails regarding uh, concerns about um, the, the aesthetic quality of the water, taste and odor issues. Um, but we just have to remember that, you know, the, the water quality is, is still good. It's just, it's a natural phenomenon that happens out in the lake uh, when it turns over. It'll eventually get better. Oh, yeah. Any other questions for Jennifer? Thank you, Jennifer. So a resolution that the matters arising A through D be received. Any mover and seconder, please. I'll Herbert. move it, Herbert. Seconder, please. Ralph Winfield. Herbert. Ralph. For the discussion. Call vote, please, Elizabeth. Kravitz? Yes. Herbert? Yes. Mackey? Yes. Peters? Yes. Peloza? Yes. Warwick? Yes. Winfield? Yes. Jones? Yes. And the motion passes, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Move down to correspondence. We have one item from MECP. Uh, any comments from your side, Elizabeth? 
No, Mr. Chair, it's just a, a reminder um, to the member municipalities. Um, I, I think I will send out another reminder uh, closer to the end of the year. Um, but MECP is just reminding of the exceptions uh, now under the Conservation Authorities Act. And I think the relevant piece here for RCA is if um, member municipalities continue to want to um, appoint um, citizen representatives to the board that they have to remember the new 70% rule. Uh, and if they want to apply for an exception uh, to that, this email really speaks to uh, that that exceptions get submitted to Requests for exceptions get submitted to the ministry well in advance. Um, unfortunately, I don't have much guidance on what well in advance means, um, but certainly we wanna get those exceptions uh, into the ministry uh, before the next municipal election and you, uh, the municipalities look at making their uh, appointments uh, to the board. So something to keep in mind, I have um, put out uh, um, a reminder already earlier when this uh, request came out to those um, member municipalities um, that are affected by this, um, but I'll put out on another reminder, like I said, in a couple of months into the new year, uh, just to make sure that they're aware of that and we get that process going if they, they want to maintain citizen reps. Any questions? Uh, Kravitz, I'll move the recommendation. Thank you. Seconder? Mackey. Thank you. Um, so, uh, call a vote, please, Elizabeth. Abbots. Yes. Herbert. Yes. Mackey. Yes. Peters. Yes. Peloza. Yes. Warwick. Yes. Winfield. Yes. Jones. Yes. And the motion passes, Mr. Chair. Thank you. We have nothing for uh, revenue and expense today, so move down to new business. Uh, item A, uh, CA Act, inventory and transition. Elizabeth. Mr. Chair, so as members uh, recall, the um, MECP's regulatory proposal consultation guide regulations defining core mandate, that phase one guide of the first phase of regulations. Um, it's still unproclaimed regulations, but it does require each CA to develop a transition plan, including an inventory of programs and services for municipal consultation by December 31st to ensure that the new proposed financial structure for CAs will be in place for the municipal um, fiscal year of 2023. Uh, so that regulation hasn't been released yet, um, but certainly the consultation guide speaks to this December 31st um, timeline to have uh, both a programs and services inventory um, consulted, uh, produced, consulted out to the member municipalities and a work plan and timeline in place as to how we will put in place the agreements with the member municipalities about any uh, funding that's required for non-mandated programs and services. Next slide. So without having that uh, regulation in place, it certainly puts um, things under a very tight timeline. As I said, what we're expected or could be expected to have in place by December 31st is an inventory of programs and services that identifies um, the authority's non-mandatory programs and services that will require an agreement with our participating municipalities continue to continue to leave, use um, either complete municipal levy to support um, that program service or partial municipal levy to support non-mandatory programs and services. Um, we need to consult with the member municipalities on the inventory and list um, steps that we're going to undertake to establish agreements and all of that material needs to be submitted to the minister by December 31st with the aim to have municipal agreements in place by December 2022 at the end of the year and rolling out that new funding model uh, beginning in 2023. The issue is that we don't have those phase one regulations yet. They're still pending. And as you recall, we had a number of questions uh, resulting out of that consultation guide about mandatory programs and services. Um, and we do expect uh, as well uh, a phase two regulation and consultation that will include a levy regulation, um, but we don't have those yet and they haven't been released today. 
So without the benefit of that information, it's, it's really unclear how um, both of those regulations or the final regulation or the proposed uh, levy regulation to be released will affect program classifications. And I think one of the concerns that uh, we as a board raised um, within our response to the consultation guide is that some mandatory programs and services were listed in that consultation guide that KCC currently isn't providing. And we would really need the benefit of uh, knowing what those are, I believe, uh, before we go out and start trying to communicate with our member municipalities about an inventory and beginning to separate out our programs and services into those categories. Next slide. So that, with that in mind, I did try to set out some type of uh, basically work plan to try to meet that December 31st deadline. Um, and uh, that means that, you know, in September, October, we'll need to consult with our neighboring CAs on, on their approach, uh, consult with our member municipalities on necessary timelines for on-time approvals so that we know uh, when your councils are meeting and how far in advance we need to have uh, reports to them for consideration and to begin to try to draft that programs and services inventory, at least with the information that we have to date. What I proposed in, in the advanced package is that we not release those programs and services uh, basically to the public until we had, or to a member municipalities, until we had the benefit of seeing the phase two uh, release in that levy regulation. Um, and that could be as late as November or later. I really don't have a, a time frame right now to when that phase two regulation will be released. Um, at a, a meeting earlier this week, um, you know, the, the provincial government is prorogued, but I have been told that despite that, that shouldn't uh, delay the release of either uh, the phase one regulations or uh, possibly the phase two consultation. Um, so it, we could be working to try to get this uh, out to member municipalities as early as November, which is a really tight timeline. Um, we need time, I think, to review and consult on the phase two. Um, and we possibly could be trying to do that at the same time as developing and consulting on programs and services uh, and that inventory, which I think may be uh, confusing for our member municipalities and a lot to take in all at once. Um, and what I presented in the advanced package is a very simplistic timeline. Uh, we may need additional board meetings um, required to even meet the goals that were um, fleshed out in that um, advanced um, in the, in the, in the um, report that I provided in the advanced package. All with the aim to try to get to December to make final uh, a presentation of final transition plans and any comments and concerns raised by the member municipalities to raise those at the December full authority to try to get this in by December 31st. Um, so in that regard, again, probably more uh, full authority meetings or special meetings to try to deal with this. Uh, and again, a very confusing time to be trying to do it as the phase two regulations are released. Um, next slide. The ministry uh, in that phase uh, one uh, regulation consultation guide, the ministry does said that it may allow for granting extensions to the prescribed dates for entering into municipal agreements, um, provided that the request is made with the support of one or more member municipalities, includes the length of the extension requested and steps the CA has taken to implement a transition plan and the rationale for the extension. Um, this week, uh, next slide. This week, I, I did receive a letter um, from Lower Thames Conservation Authority, uh, and they considered uh, these tight timelines and a proposed um, work plan by their staff uh, at their August meeting. And the motion that was passed uh, out of their discussion was basically that Lower Thames approached member municipalities and neighboring conservation authorities regarding a two-year agreement to maintain the current levy approach to allow for proper negotiations of the new levy protocol and further that this request be forwarded to the province. 
So some of the discussion that happened at that board that was um, communicated uh, to me in the letter from uh, their general manager uh, was the board was concerned with municipal councils signing funding agreements at the end of their terms that would bind future councils and new councils may not have the background to consider a long-term agreement. Uh, Lower Thames felt that the member municipalities should have a strategic plan based on the period of the funding agreement that shows um, the CA is plan what shows what the CA is planning to accomplish, and that would require additional time. Um, they felt the timing is is short given the unknowns and the regulations have not yet been provided. Uh, and they felt that the new timing that they were suggesting in, in looking at a two-year agreement to maintain the current levy um, agreement would align better with some uh, member municipalities and their strategic planning and budget processes, uh, such as the City of London that does that four-year that four uh, planning, which would include us as well. Uh, so Lower Thames has reached out uh, for us to consider um, looking uh, at a, a similar ap approach with them and exploring that. Uh, and I put that out, uh, all of this out for discussion and feedback from the board today. Thank you, Elizabeth. Comments? The letter, the letter from Lower Thames seems to make sense to me. It, it actually makes a lot of sense, but. I would agree with you, Grant. It's Allison speaking. I think, uh, you know, in the election period, <clears throat> it, with the timing of that, it would make sense. It would give a chance a new council. And I think there's going to be a lot of shakeups this year. There's a lot of people that probably aren't going to come back. So I think it's important that the, for the conservation authorities that they have a chance to uh, educate the people in the new councils. Any other comments? Mr. So Chair, oh, sorry, if, sorry, if you can go, Jessica, to the next slide. Um, I did come up with a draft recommendation and that was simply that KCCA work with Lower Thames on an approach to neighboring conservation authorities and member municipalities regarding a two-year agreement to maintain the current levy approach to allow for proper negotiations of the new levy protocol. So we would work with Lower Towns to go out to our, our member municipalities and some of the other CAs in the region uh, to gain support for this concept. Any other questions or comments? Would anybody like to move the uh, draft recommendation? I will. Where are we? Second. So Mackie. Mackie seconds. Yep. Any further discussion? We'll call the vote, please, Elizabeth. Kravitz? Yes. Herbert? Yes. Mackey? Yes. Peters? Yes. Peloza? Yes. Warwick? Yes. Winfield? Yes. Jones? Yes. And that motion passes, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Item B, Kettle Creek Clean Water Initiative. And Betsy is going to talk about this one. Yeah, Mr. Chair, if I may, I just have a, a little preamble to Betsy's presentation sure. today. Um, the, the Kettle Creek Clean Water Initiative is supported uh, by our stewardship reserve. And every year we budget $12,000 uh, for this, uh, for the initiative. Uh, the stewardship reserve currently sits at $96,462. Uh, this year to date, $6,000 of that $12,000 budgeted has already been allocated. The, the projects that Betsy's going to present to you to today uh, would take us over the budgeted $12,000 um, by about uh, $3,000. Uh, if all were approved, an additional 9,000 would be required, resulting in a, in a final poll from the 2020, a final uh, poll from reserves of 15,000, so $3,000 above uh, what was budgeted. It is expected that uh, Betsy has been very successful in the past uh, by uh, attracting other funding, which results in, in a less draw from reserves than we expected. 
Um, and I, I would uh, point out to the members that the reserve is at a good balance. Um, and historically, uh, we've only uh, pulled about 12,000 from the reserves over the last five years. So we've never completely pulled uh, $12,000 from, from the reserves in any given year, just because of the successful fundraising uh, that Betsy does. So it would be my recommendation that uh, if you indeed would like to support the three projects that she presents today, um, I'm confident that we have the funds uh, to support that extra poll and would certainly recommend that extra poll uh, from the reserves. Thank you, Elizabeth. Betsy, are you, are you ready to go? I'm ready. Jess, if you can go forward. Uh, so as Elizabeth mentioned, uh, there are three wetland creation projects for you to consider today. This first project, 2103, um, is a project in Central Algon, just um, south of our office here off Highbury Ave. Uh, it's fallow land on this farm that seasonally holds water and already uh, shows signs of some wetland plants. Uh, the project would see the excavation of two cells um, at a cost of $13,430. Uh, Ducks Unlimited has already uh, confirmed 50% funding for the project. Um, and so the request for this would be $3,000 from the Kettle Creek Clean Water Initiative. Next slide, Jess. The next project here uh, is also uh, in Central Elgin on uh, Roberts Line, so closer to uh, the lake. Um, and basically uh, this project um, was just uh, purchased, the land was just purchased by this landowner and he's looking to naturalize some of the, uh, the property by uh, completing a wetland creation project and also tree planting. Um, this site is also adjacent to a provincially significant wetland complex um, and the quote is for $16,190 for an approximately uh, one acre uh, wetland. Uh, Ducks Unlimited once again is um, approved 50% funding for the project um, and the ask from the Kettle Creek Clean Water Initiative is $3,000. And next slide. And the last uh, wetland creation project, this is in the far northwest portion of our watershed in Middlesex Center, uh, a wet area at the back of the woodlot that is no longer farmed. Um, so approximately a, a 0.25 acre wetland would be excavated um, at this site at a cost of $8,904. Um, Ducks Unlimited once again has already confirmed their 50% um, support. Um, and this project is also looking for uh, $3,000. Okay. Thank you, Betsy. Uh, any questions for Betsy? Just a quick thought there for Betsy through the chair. Eaters. These are three Wadworth projects for sure. And uh, I think we have to be moving forward anytime we have the opportunity to, to develop these areas. So I, I have no problem supporting the, uh, the project. So anyway, good job, Betts. Go ahead, Steve. Uh, thanks, Mr. Chair. Um, do we have to undertake any sort of archeological when we start excavating like this, uh, you know, the potential for, uh, you know, an, an indigenous site to exist. So I'm just, I'm just sort of curious, uh, do we have to do any uh, advanced work like that? Uh, we haven't uh, ever done any screenings like that previously. I did it look into um, some of the wording um, that the province provided, and it was more specific to, to development, like building sort of structures and that sort of thing. Um, and they also had some guidelines of where that would most likely be done. Um, but to date, we have not. Follow up there. Any other questions or concerns? Um, Mackie, through you, Mr. Chair. Yes, I, I agree with the other members, and uh, I think these are very important. So I'd like to move the recommendation, please. Okay. I'll second it, Herbert. Herbert. 
Any further discussion? Call the vote, please, Elizabeth. Uh, Kravitz? Yes. Herbert? Yes. Jones? Yes. Mackey? Yes. Peters? Peters? Steve Peters? Yes. Oh, Peloza? Yes. Warwick? Yes. Winfield? Yes. And that motion passes, Mr. Chair. Thank you. And we'll move down to item E, planning regulation activity report from Joe. Go ahead, Joe. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, as usual, the summary activity report was provided in the advanced packages that just outlines uh, planning support and permits issued at the staff level since the last meeting. Just looking for board to uh, receive that information and I'm happy to answer any questions if the members have any. Any questions for Joe? See none, so recommendation to Receive the report. Mover and seconder, please. I would move that it be. Uh... Warwick move. So we got Winfield and Warwick. Further discussion? Call the vote, please, Elizabeth. On the motion, Kravitz? Yes. Herbert? Yes. Mackey? Yes. Peters? Yes. Peloza? Yes. Warwick? Yes. Winfield? Yes. Jones? Yes. And that motion passes, Mr. Chair. Thank you. I think that's the end of open session. Uh, need a motion to go into closed session for A, legal matter for potential litigation, B, personal matter for identifiable persons, and uh, B as well. I think that might be a C, just a typo, but property matters, security of a property. We need to move Loza moves. Loza. Seconder. Kravitz. Peters Kravitz. will move. Call the vote, please, Elizabeth. Kravitz. Peters. Yes. Herbert. Yes, yeah, sorry. I had to mute myself. <laughs> Mackey. Yes. Peters. Yes. Peloza. Yes. Warwick. Yes. Winfield? Yes. And Jones? Yes. No. Motion passes, Mr. Chair.